In this video, we're going to create a new project, work with the theme editor, and download the graphics for the Dicey app. To create a new project, we're going to use Android Studio's setup wizard. You can do this from the splash screen, or if you've got a project open, just go to File, New, New Project. Set the application name to Dicey with two E's. For the company domain, you can have any value you want. This is only important for apps that you're looking to publish on the App Store. I leave mine as LondonAppery.com, but you can use the name of a domain that you own or use your full name instead. For the project location, you should save the Dicey app to your projects folder that we set up. Remember, if you're a Windows user, this projects folder should be directly on your C drive. Then click Next to go to the next step in the wizard. Now Android Studio is asking us about the target devices. You can leave the default value for the minimum SDK. Here, we are specifying the oldest possible device that can run the Dicey app. In my case, the default is set to API level 16. Reading the little note from Android Studio, we're informed that based on the current usage stats, Dicey will be able to run on 95.2% of all Android devices in the world. So if you're setting the minimum SDK for API level 16, you've pretty much got all the phones out there covered. Click Next, and now Android Studio's wizard will give you a choice of a bunch of starter templates for our app. Out of all these starter templates, select the empty activity. It's pretty cool that the team at Google included these templates, since it really helps save time when you get started and want to include some specific functionality. Click Next again, and here we can leave the activity name and the layout file names with their default values. And now click Finish. So you and I have to be patient now while the Gradle build tool sets up our project. You can monitor the progress at the bottom of Android Studio in the status bar. Once the project has finished building, we should be dropped off at the mainactivity.java file, and all the red underlines on the text should disappear. Now let's check out the activity underscore main.xml layout file to see what our app would look like at the moment. This is the layout template that's been given to us by Android Studio's setup wizard. You can also find this layout file under app, res, and then layout. Now what you see on your machine at home may not exactly match what I've got on my screen right now, depending on when you're watching this video. The layout template is generated by the setup wizard, and with every version of Android Studio, Google seems to be making small tweaks to the templates that they're including. So the layout template generated with Android Studio version 2.3 is not exactly the same as the one you'd see if you generated the layout with version 2.1. But don't worry. We're going to edit the layout so that both you and I will be on the same page in a few steps. If you click on Design at the bottom of the screen, you're going to switch to the Design view for this file. And we can see here that the setup wizard gave me an action bar in our template. The first thing I will do is change my theme to get rid of this action bar at the top. In the Project pane on the left, expand the directories until you see a file called styles.xml. With the project pane displaying the Android view, you can find the styles XML under app, res, and then values. The styles.xml file configures the overall style of our Dicey app. We can edit the code in this file directly, but you can also see that Android Studio is encouraging us to use the so-called theme editor. Either click on the suggestion, or you can find a theme editor under tools, Android, and then theme editor. In the theme editor, we can see the styling of various Android components in our app. If we were to add a button to the app, it would be styled like this. And if we were to add a checkbox to our app, the default style would look like this. The look of all these components from buttons to progress bars to switches will depend on how we've configured our theme on the right hand side. For example, if we change the accent color to uh, something else like green, we can see that all the radio buttons and checkboxes and spinners will now use the green accent color by default. And we can also change the parent theme by choosing a different one from the dropdown. The parent theme is just a theme on which the theme of our app is based on. Go to Show All Themes to bring up a new window, and then narrow down this list by putting in a filter. We only want to display themes in this list that do not have an action bar. Type in No Action Bar as one word, and then pick a theme that does not have an action bar. Mind you, the list you see will depend on which Android SDKs you have installed. I'm going to choose the App Compat Light No Action Bar. But you could also choose the Material No Action Bar, or any of the other ones, but this one will do for me. After you've chosen your theme, 
click OK and navigate back to the activity underscore main.xml layout file. We should now see the action bar disappear in our preview. And if we navigate back to the styles.xml file, we can also see that the style.xml file reflects the changes to the accent color. And not only that, the parent theme is now also the one that we chose in the theme editor. In my case, I chose the appcompat.light.noActionBar parent theme. Now it's time to get hold of all the graphics that we will use in our app. We'll need to change the images on the die after all, right? Also, those default launcher icons that shipped with the template are really meh. So open your favorite browser and navigate to the URL that we're including in the description of this video. This will send you to a location where you can download the zip file that contains all the image assets that we're going to use in the app. If you're using a Mac, simply double click on the zip file to extract the contents. And if you're on a Windows machine, right click on the zip file that you just downloaded and go to extract all. Now you have to specify where the files should be extracted to. Delete the bit at the end of the file path and make sure you extract the contents to the downloads folder. Then hit extract. In the next video, we'll show you how to include these graphic assets in your Android project and how to generate your launcher icons. I'll see you there.